Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. This is Sister Billie Jean Bishop with Partners in Prayer. And we have partnered with Hope Ministries, uh, prayers for uh, the prodigals and those who love them. We have partnered with uh, 90 Days of Prayer for Prodigals, utilizing many tools, including the book that many of you have by Dr. James Banks, 90 Days of Prayer for Prodigals. We'll um, post that in the comments, how you can order that if you don't have the book. And today is day two. If you didn't hear yesterday's introduction, I invite you to go ahead and go to my page, Billy Jean Bishop, Prayers for Prodigals, or even Hope Community page, and you can find the uh, video there. I'm coming to you audio today. Um, it is a little easier for me to teach audio. And so whenever you see this blue logo of 90 Days of Prayer, we'll have different leaders Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Central Time. We will save these recordings. And you all pray we are endeavoring to put all of these on a YouTube uh, account so that there's nothing else there but the recordings. Uh, it's very challenging for me because whenever you put something on Facebook, there's a lot that goes before and after the videos. So we're we're working on that right now. We're not professional in our live streaming, but we are a people that believe in the power of prayer. We're a group of apostolics called Partners in Prayer. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, uh, those who are hearing this recording or joining us live, Facebook, welcome, welcome. We do welcome you. We're so thankful uh, that you have joined us in this journey. Just day two. Yesterday, we consecrated ourselves. Yesterday, we prayed from my church. I opened up at the altar, and God had impressed my heart that if we will cultivate our, our altar in our churches, in our prayer rooms, that God would send those prodigals to our very location, to our altar. So I challenge you again today as we open up day two to find at least once a week a place of prayer in your own church. Uh, place some prayer requests, a prayer bottle, whatever you need to do to encourage others to join you in this 90 days of prayers for prodigals. And so I went to the altar because that's where I want my children to stand beside me. Those I have been witnessing to, those I have been reaching out to. I want to cultivate that altar and allow the fire of God to fall in that place. And that when those prodigals come home, the servants are ready with the robe and the ring like the prodigal of the father and the two lost sons. We're going to prepare those altars. We're going to prepare ourselves. And we're going to pray daily for 90 days. We're praying April 1st until June 29th, Monday through Friday. On the weekends, I encourage you to use your book. Uh, speak into the atmosphere of your home. Write down the scriptures. Write down what God speaks to you today and in the days following so you can see the hand of God and what he is showing you regarding your own prodigal. I thank the Lord for Diane and Don Long for their uh, headship and their authority that they carry. It ca provides a covering for Brother Bishop and I. We have been uh, released and anointed and commissioned to pray for prodigals by our own leadership at Hope Springs United Pentecostal Church. And we're grateful for this. I don't take this lightly. I give honor to God, uh, to my pastor, and to my husband, and those of you that pray for us. You are prayer leaders. You could do this. You have been called and equipped and anointed. And we're going to provide you with different prayer leaders that we have built up over the last five years. They'll be coming on at 10 a.m. and joining us and giving the daily devotion. And of course, the anointing of the Lord is going to be there. You're going to hear from the Lord as we journey together in the book 
and with comments. I have some powerful testimonies to share today. You want to remain with us the whole hour if you can. If you miss it and you have to go, you can go back and listen to the recording. I will save them to my page, Billie Jean Bishop, and as well as the Prayers for Prodigals page. So let's get started. Um, let's um, go ahead and just pray for a moment or two. Lord, I commit myself to you. I ask God for your powerful anointing once again. I ask, oh God, that you would be uh, my voice. I ask God that you would impress my heart, that the scriptures would come alive, that you would lose some release healing, that forgiveness will release your supernatural strength to the families that are pre uh, presented here, that are standing before your throne of mercy and grace for their precious children. I pray, God, that there would be understanding given. I pray, God, that there would be a release of your grace and your strength to continue to love our prodigals. I pray for these parents and families and pastors, ministers of the Gospels whose children are wayward. Lord, for adult children that have lived many years away from the altar, call them back, Lord. We are coming together in your presence, Lord, repeating back into your heart, God, the very words that you have written in the holy word of God. We are not focusing on our problems, Lord. We are focusing today on our problem, on our promises, excuse me, Lord, not the problem, not the problems the prodigals bring, but God, my prayer is that we would focus on your promises, and I ask it in the name of Jesus. I appreciate y'all praying for me. To do a live recording takes um, great skill and patience. I have three devices that I'm looking at, plus all my reading materials and my Bible, and the Lord helps me. But I covet your prayers. Um, the enemy does not like what we are doing. But I believe and will declare this into the atmosphere that when hell attacks us, heaven will surely defend us. He will raise a banner against us when the flood of the enemy comes. So I plead the blood of Jesus over our ministry, the Partners in Prayer ministry, and every family that has joined us. Protect them, keep them and preserve them as we come before you in humility, asking for the Spirit of God to speak to us and through us in Jesus' name. So as I teach, we pray. So stay in a prayerful attitude, stay in a prayerful uh, mind and, and thought process. Those of you that are on the prayer conference line, I so appreciate you muting your own line uh, and then I won't have to if there happens to be some unplanned background noise. Okay, we've prayed, we've introduced, we've welcomed, share this, share this, share this. You just have to hit the share button to someone, to your own church prayer group, uh, save it to your page, and we're going to continually to grow and lift our voices. We know that God blesses unity. God blesses focus. God blesses faith and persistency. So here we go. I'm going to be reading uh, right out of the book today. I want to give honor to Dr. James Banks, who began this journey and recorded this scriptural journey in prayer before God, using the Word of God, daily focusing on praying the Word of God and allowing us to be changed. Remember those of you that were on the call yesterday, I reminded you that for the first 30 days, this is our time. We ourselves are going to be changed. I believe there will be prodigals that will come. I had prodigals message me yesterday that are praying for them to overcome and return to the house of God that heard the recording. How amazing, God, how far-reaching is the love of God. Just to send them an encouragement, stay with us, stay with us. The Father's house is prepared. You are welcomed home. We have made ourselves ready. We've been feeding the fatted calf. There is a robe and a ring. God will restore you. You will be fed and covered and nurtured in the Father's house. God's been working on us. God's been changing us. So let's go ahead and look at Dr. Dr. James Banks book this morning, day two, for those of you that are following along in the book, page 20. And the title of this devotion is called, When You Feel Like a Failure 
as a parent. Now, when I say that, I can remember my teenage uh, years of my teenagers and that struggle in their faith. I can remember that I have felt like I failed my sons, my failed my grandchildren. But God has reminded me that there is the cleansing of the blood. And even if I came up short and failed, that they have an adversary that has stalked them and has drawn them away. But we can, as parents, be encouraged today. So the scripture that Dr. Banks refers to is in Jude, verse 24. Highlight this in your Bible today because you're on a journey yourself for a journey of faith. Before this 90 days is up, there's going to be a shift in your faith and there's going to be a confidence and a boldness and a new love for your beloved prodigals. And it reads like this in Jude 24 and somebody can paste it in the comments on Facebook. I'd appreciate that to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. The author, Dr. Banks, goes on to say, I don't know how many times I've felt like there must have been something more, something more I could have done as a parent, as a father, as a mother, if I had just had more of your love, your strength, and your wisdom, perhaps my child would have made choices that would have kept her, kept him close to you. Oh, that sense of regret. You can't live long in the valley of regret because it will turn into a valley of death. You can't stay there, and these are my own words. You have to move on with the grace and forgiveness of God. The author says, I would have changed some things if I had known then what I know now. Remember, I said we are going to be changed during this process. This first 90 days, or rather 30 days of the 90 days is for you and I. Father, forgive me where I have sinned and fallen short of the best you have provided for me. Forgive me where I have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The glory of God. That's in Romans 3.23. We're going to talk about regret today. We don't want to stay here. Because I can't change what has already happened. You can't change it. I pray that you will open my heart and the heart of the listeners today to new things. Ask the Lord to open your heart. Even now, Lord, open my heart to new things that you are doing so that I do not dwell on the past. Look at Isaiah 43 and 18. If somebody could share that, Isaiah 43 and 18. Help me instead to press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's found in Philippians 3, 14. You've told me that my grace is sufficient for you. I'm speaking this in the Holy Ghost today. That the Lord Jesus himself has come on Friday morning to remind us that in our journey to pray our children home back to the Father's house, he is saying to you and to me, my grace is sufficient for you. That unmerited favor, that unearned favor and help, that grace that will carry us, pick us up supernaturally and help us move and press on towards the prize. We are working our own salvation out with fear and with trembling, but we need that grace today. We need that power. The author goes on to say, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Now that contradicts when I am weak, the Bible says, then I am strong. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And the Bible even says, when my flesh and my heart fail, you are my strength and my portion. You are that strength. The Bible also says to lift up the hands that hang down and the feeble knees. That means I'm bending under, I'm being bowed down under the pressure of failure. God is telling us, look up, look up. He is coming alongside of us and grace, grace is lifting us up. 
Yesterday we humbled ourselves and bowed ourselves and consecrated ourselves. And the Lord is saying to, to, to us today, His grace, His marvelous, wonderful, amazing grace will save us, will lift us. He will carry us. Thank you for reminding us, the author says, that I must depend on you, Father, and that you are able to present me before you without fault and with great joy. Now, I want us to say this. Lord, I thank you that I can depend on you. Father, present me before you without fault and with great joy. Help me to be very careful how I live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Lord, help me. Are you praying those words with me? Help me to be careful how I live. It's worth repeating. Not as unwise, but as wise. Does God answer prayer? He that asks for wisdom, the Bible says, the Lord will not correct you or re 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 reject you. He will give you wisdom. Wisdom to win souls. Wisdom to win our prodigals. But when we win prodigals, we're always pointing them to the lover of their soul. Our dependency and our trust is in God and in God alone. Help me, O oh Lord, as we continue to pray along with Dr. Banks on day two. Help me to make the most of every opportunity. This weekend, we may have a family meal together. Your prodigal may join you in service at the house of prayer. How wonderful that would be. Perhaps you'll meet at a restaurant and share that Easter meal. Perhaps you'll have your grandbabies or your children in, in the front yard searching for eggs and a laughter and a fun time. But perhaps some of you have family members incarcerated and in jail and uh, far from you in a hospital sick bed. God knows where you are, but the Lord is encouraging us today. Not only is his grace sufficient, not only will he give us wisdom, but to take advantage of every opportunity to point our beloved prodigals to you with consistency and sincerity. You can look up Ephesians 5 and read verses 15 through 16. It'll help you because Lord, you give grace to the humble. Proverbs 3 and 34. Help me to set an example in everything I do, just as you have done for me. John 13. And why am I sharing these scriptures? Because this is a scriptural prayer journey. We overcome by the word of the Lord and by, by our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. So we're praying the word of God. Just as you have done for me, remember where the Lord brought you from. Take that remembrance and look at your prodigal saying, God, you can save to the uttermost. Surely, surely if you can save me and free me by your blood covering and strengthen me by your grace, you can do it for my beloved prodigal. Look at them differently this weekend. Look at them as a child of covenant. Even though they may not act like a child of covenant. If they're not with you, get a picture of them. I encourage you, I challenge you, set it somewhere. Look into the face of your beloved prodigals and their children. And if they have children and grandchildren. And look into those faces. And declare that as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You are a covenant child. Speak prophetically into the face of those children, adult children, young teenagers, wherever they are, whoever they are, speak unto them. Let them know that you're praying for them. My son will ask for prayer. And when I had COVID, my precious beloved son and granddaughter are away from God at this time. They're on their own journey to discover their face-to-face -face relationship with the Father. And I'm not going to interfere with that, that journey back to the Father. I'm believing that God's going to give them a new beginning. 
They're not going to go back to their old ways. They're not going to remember the pain of the past, but they're going to press into a new beginning, a new understanding, a fresh enlightenment with the Lord. And their love between the lover of their soul and them is going to be new and fresh. It's going to be pure. It's going to be personal. It's going to be their own walk with God. And when that happens, we're going to rejoice. We're going to be part of the restoration process. We're going to put the robe and the ring around them. We're going to see them as children of God, not as ex-prodigals or ex-backsliders. We're going to see them on the same journey that you and I have taken from the day where we repented. Go back to your first love. Remember where you were when you gave your heart to God. Remember that moment where the tears rolled down your face. I've been doing this today. I remember my very first Easter after being filled with the Holy Ghost, how I saw things differently. When I received the gift of the Holy Ghost, even the trees looked greener. The sky looked brighter. The world looked different. It's going to be the same for your prodigal. The heart of stone's going to come out of them, and they're going to be given by God, the maker, his, their creator, a new heart and a new fresh beginning the author goes on to pray help me to keep my eyes fixed on you O sovereign lord when you pray those words O sovereign lord that means everything that's going on as as far as you keeping control of what's happening in your family is surrendered at your altar it's given to him. He is sovereign. He is all ruling. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He has your prodigal's heart in his hands. He has them. They're not lost to him. But as I fix my eyes upon you, O sovereign Lord, so that I will not rely on myself. This is our message today. Our source of strength comes from you. Our source of hope comes from you, Lord. But be strong in you, in your mighty power, O God. You can look at that up in Psalms 141 and Ephesians 6. Where have I my blind spots, Lord, where I have blindsided, Lord, where I don't see, Father, where I don't see the air of my way, where I don't see what I'm doing to complicate and hold my prodigals bound. Lord, there's walls of disappointment. There's anger. There's unforgiveness. Lord, There's I've been wounded by my prodigal. Lord, I come today on day two and ask you to take those wounds and bind them up. The bruises of being battered back and forth because of their addictions, because of their poor choices, and because of the anger between them and the house of God. And Lord, all the battles that come, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we we do wrestle against principalities, but there have been wounding of spirits and severing of relationships. And I come to you, Father, and ask you to search me, try me, see if there be any hidden faults in me, any anything hidden that I can repent of and move into the promises of God. Let nothing about me, the author says, be a stumbling block. Now, we look at the prodigal, and we look at all their problems, and we think, well, it's their issue. It isn't their issue alone. It's your issue. What they're going through, what they're doing, the rebellion they're walking in, the pit, the pig pen, the wallowing in the pig pen, it all affects you. It sends rippling effects. It should never be like a strong wind that blows you aside or takes your eyes off of Jesus. But it does affect you. It affects you mentally. When you lay your head on your pillow, you rehearse what's gone on that day. Perhaps you stood in a courtroom today. Perhaps you stood uh, uh, in, in a rehab center. Perhaps you stood and watched your children fight and disagree and, and, and struggle. And perhaps they lost their job again. Perhaps Perhaps they have drank themselves to sleep again. 
Perhaps they're using drugs that could destroy their bodies. And you lay there in that experience, those that tsunami of experience. Perhaps they're, li they're living in a gay lifestyle. Some of our parents of prodigals have children that are deceived, that need deliverance, that need healthy restoration of their mind and relationships. But we as parents... And those that are praying for prodigals need to just take that all to the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, forgive my hidden faults. Forgive my unbelief. Forgive my anxiousness, Lord. Oh, God, help me, Lord, to just be at peace and know that you are their Savior. You are their Redeemer. You will rescue them. You will expose their sins and bring that precious gift of repentance. You and you alone. But I pray now, direct my heart unto your love. Direct it. Turn it. Help me focus on your love. Help me experience your love. Perhaps some of you have felt the need to kneel beside your chair or to stand up and lift your hands. Whatever posture of prayer you're in right now, Perhaps you're doing dishes. Perhaps you're working around your house. Take a moment right now and say, Lord, direct my heart to love and to persevere. To love and to persevere. Holy Spirit, lead us. Lead us, Lord, to be filled with your presence, Lord. To be filled with you where there's no room for bitterness and anger and disappointment. So that the streams of living water will flow from within me. Spring up, O oh well. The song says, spring up, O oh well, and fill my soul. Spring up, O oh well, and make me whole. Hallelujah. Let that well spring up to eternal life. Not just for me, but for the child the husband, the wife, the niece, the nephew that I love. My beloved prodigals, my prayer list, Lord. Help me to love them as you love them. And help me to be faithful, persistent, and consecrated unto you. To see them restored and returned back to the love of the Father. And I ask it. In the name of Jesus. I told you, this first 30 days, it's working on us. You know, Jacob, he wrestled with an angel. You know the story. At Bethel, all night. There was a ladder and angels at Sunday school. We, I, I remember telling the story to children. There were angels that ascended and descended, coming up and down. Uh, Jacob called that place Bethel, the house of God. It was an altar that he remembered encountering God. And he wrestled with an angel all night long. And remember, the Bible says that the angel reached into his inner thigh and wounded him. And he wouldn't let the angel go. He wrestled him until the early morning hours. And the Bible says Jacob limped. Some of you have been wounded by the things that you have gone through with your own poor choices and your own prodigal's choices. And you've also wrestled with God. You've wrestled in your mind, in your heart. But I'm here to tell you that his grace is sufficient. And uh, to remind you that Jacob wrestled with the angel because the next morning he was going to meet with Esau. And they were going to fall on their necks because Jacob wrestled in prayer at the house of God. He set up an altar. What are you preparing? What are you setting up? What does your altar say about your faith and your surrender? When he met Esau, he Esau instead of come, remember Esau was going to kill him for taking his birthright. They were separated, severed for years. Jacob was bringing uh, gifts of cattle to appease the anger of Esau. He was also had his women, his wives, excuse me, and children back away so that Esau could not have access to them because he knew the potential of this warrior, his brother Esau, could destroy and kill his sons and daughters. But that didn't happen because prayer summoned the angels. And prayer brought Jacob into the presence of God. And he wrestled 
until he surrendered and when he and esau met and their eyes met their arms went around their shoulders and they began to weep read it what will prayer do for the restoration in relationship to your prodigal? I'm speaking to somebody today. There was a time I couldn't look into the face of my, my firstborn and him saying, Mom, I love you. I love you, Mom. I love you. There was a time we went through a severing and a separation. He said, I don't want to ever see you again. I no longer have a mother. Because of sin and severing and anger and bitterness and wrath and unforgiveness. But the Lord's going to work on your side of the issue. And he's going to help you like he helped Jacob to pray and wrestle. And then when you are restored to your product, I'm talking to somebody today. You have been estranged from your children because of sin and rebellion. Possibly because of words you have said. Possibly because of wounds that have been between you. But I am telling you the word of God says that the father waited. He saw him afar off. And when he came into the father's house, the house was ready for the return of the lost son. He said my son was lost, but now he is found. Let us rejoice. Thank you, Lord. I want to um, almost finished here. I want to read uh, what Sister Long posted about this very devotion. So if you would listen to me, you can go to uh, Hope Community page. And if you want to find that page, um, I can send that to you if you message me. He said, to him that is able to, or she did, she wrote this, to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you before his glorious presence without fault and great joy. That's reviewing Jude 24. And she goes on to say, when our children turn away from spiritual values, it is natural to wonder what went wrong. We ask ourselves, what could I have done differently? Before we allow Satan to put us on a guilt trip, we must remember we live in a day of extreme temptation. We live in a day where there's hurt and disappointment. And we, there's those that need to be loved, needing to belong, can have a huge effect on our, our prodigals and the choices they make and the decisions that may, they make. And um, it can bring a discouraged life on someone who feels lacking or even unattractive. Single parenting evokes the question, is there something more I could have done? Are you a single parent? Checking that list only brings anguish and torment to you. Focusing on the present, Sister Long says, and forgetting the past, the best approach is to look to God's Word. And the Word of God says, when you're wrestling with, with these things that have your family bound, is that this kind cometh out, but not but by prayer and fasting. You may have to face this and say, this kind can only be wrestled down through prayer. And fasting. May God lead us forward into what God is speaking to us today. Now I'm, I'm going to uh, read a testimony. I promised you the next 90 days is going to be filled with testimonies. This testimony is hot off the griddle, if I can say it. This testimony came in just the last few days. And this testimony is coming from Asa. Lona, Lola, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that, Asa Lola, Arkansas, and it is written by Sister Marion Wright Trailer. Now, Sister Marion Wright Trailer is a anointed minister. She has what's called a blanket ministry. She makes blankets for those that are sick, those that are hospitalized, those that are incarcerated. Those blankets are prayed for and they're taken to people. Upon request, they're taken and delivered to individuals. That anointing brings comfort and breaks the yoke. It's like an anointed cloth. And she has many stories, but this one just happened. And I want to read it to you if you will allow me to listen. Or to, yeah, for to listen. Here we go. Praise the Lord. I have another story to tell, she said. Our God is a miracle working God. It was Wednesday afternoon 
in February. Snow was so deep it was almost impossible to drive. When my phone rang, it was the head jailer at the jail in Arkansas, Wendell Pritchett. Wendell had heard about our prayer blanket ministry at Christian Life Center. After introducing himself, he said, I have a prisoner here who does not need to be in jail. Now, I want you to notice a call was made. Someone had noticed that this broken man didn't need to be in jail. The God was moving. He went on to explain that this man named Carlos had lost three family members recently. He'd lost his son, his wife, and his sister-in-law all within a short period of time. And now, because of this situation, he had become suicidal, extremely depressed, and he started taking different drugs. And he was there in jail because of an altercation between him and a family member. So I want, as I share this testimony, I want you to imagine this scenario of this broken man ended up in prison because of an altercation, because his life was out of control, because life had came crashing down on him and he was being crushed under the weight of it and had landed in jail. Charges had been filed and he was looking at going to prison. Wendell continued to tell me what a good person he was, that Carlos had asked if if we would bring him a prayer blanket. Immediately, Sister made plans with uh, another saint in the church there to meet her and to help her pray. Carlos had several family members who attended Bethel Church in, in Osalona where Melissa's pastors where her brother pastors. So there was people, all kinds of people involved, praying, uh, connected. A man noticed that he, he didn't need to belong in jail. And people began to pray. And a blanket was ano- made and anointed and prepared. She goes on to say, in fact, at one time, Carlos had been the youth leader there. He was a backslider. The following Sunday, we met at the jail where Carlos was. I must say that was a first time for me. I had never been inside the door of a jail where prayer won't take you, brothers and sisters. Wendell went to Carlos's cell and brought him into the courtroom where her friend and herself and a cousin of Carlos was waiting. As I gave him the blanket, I explained to him that it had been anointed with oil and prayed over. And then I asked him if he cared if we prayed for him. So imagine this scene in this jail with this backslider. I had my bottle of oil, which I handed to Wendell, and then passed it to everyone else. We anointed him with oil, and we prayed. I immediately felt a change in him. I told him that God was about to turn some things around. Wendell said as he went back to his cell, he was happy, and he was singing. What deliverance will bring, even incarceration. No longer was he suicidal, but happy. Within three days, three days he was working in the kitchen and cleaning the jail. Instead of going to prison, Carlos was released to go home. I was in church Sunday at Bethel Church with both Wendell and Carlos. Carlos had already given his heart back to God and explained to me how that he had renewed his relationship with God. He was so happy and he was not the same person. As for Wendell, it was his first time. This jailer, this man that that worked in the jail, it was his first time to be in a Pentecostal church. What prayer will do? He thoroughly enjoyed it, and he began studying his Bible and told me that he wants that Book of Acts experience. Who knew how quickly that a small anointed prayer blanket and a small bottle of oil with much prayer could change the lives of two young men? The power of prayer, life-changing, marvelous, and wonderful God, she says. I believe that Wendell will receive that born-again experience from the book of Acts. She goes on to say, I believe he will be baptized in Jesus' name. This man who is yet to be born again of the water and the Spirit led a backslider to someone that could pray and help him. I believe that God is going to use him to show other prisoners the way. 
I believe Carlos will continue to do well and that God will continue to restore happiness, peace, and joy. Thank you, Jesus, for going into that jail and for changing lives. And the beautiful part of this, and I'm not going to read it, I'm going to save it for them coming on the line, is that Carlos saw this post and he said, this is about me. He says, it was painful to be away from God all these years, but now I'm home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How far reaching is prayer? How far can it go? Where will your prayers take you? Where will your altar of faith and submission and consecration and worship, where will you go? Will you carry a bottle of oil in case you meet a backslider? Will you fill up your jars in your church with names of prodigals? What will you do as an expression of faith to God that you know the backsliders are coming home? If Sister Diane Long told Told me as she prayed for me yesterday. She said, Sister Billy Jean, you pray for others' prodigals, and God is going to bring your prodigals home. I believe that. So we're going to close out this time of Facebook Live, and we're going to go to the prayer line. And you can dial the prayer line at 563. Sister Josie put this in the comments. 563 nine 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 two eight three three and i want you to to know one thing i've been getting names there there are hundreds of names i'm going to write those names on a piece of paper and put it in our hope springs prayer bottle for prodigals I believe that prayer bottle is going to be filled up. There's no power in that bottle that is taken from a scripture that says he stores my tears in his bottle. In order for the Lord to capture our tears, he has to be close enough to us. We can meet him at the altar and our tears uh, metaphorically can be captured. But the Bible's it's recorded in the scripture that he stores our tears tears in his bottle that our names are written in his book see god has a prayer list he has a book he has a recording he has a journal and in that journal is the trail of the blood and in his own signature in his own hand he is answering prayers he is writing out he's the author and finisher of our faith hallelujah i hope there's been something that has stirred you today, that has allowed you to find a place of prayer. Invite someone, invite your backslider this weekend to church, but make sure that you have been anointed by God before you do that invitation. Love those that are around you. Look at all the gifts and the blessings, the arrows of your quiver. Look at your children. You can do this quietly, but when they come in and meet grandma or meet you, or you get up in the morning and you hug your babies, do it with an anointing. Do it as you hug them with an anointing from God. Hallelujah. This is the day to uh, present ourselves in his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Don't feel like a failure today as a parent, as a wife. Don't feel like you have failed. Find your place of repentance. Enter in. Summon the angels to be involved in your families. Walk with God and see what God will do. I I appreciate Sister. Uh, excuse me, just a minute. My mind. I'm going to get her name here in just a minute. Precious, you can go to her page, and she's going to be a guest on our uh, Marion Wright trailer. Marion Wright Trailer. I appreciate her allowing me to share Carlos's testimony and Wendell's testimony. It's just proof that God is still calling back the backslider. So dial in. We're going to take your request. Uh, we're going to pray together for the next 20 minutes. And so you are welcome to join us. Thank you for being with me. Would you share this? Would you just have enough faith that this is going to help someone else, your prayer partner, someone in your church? The reason that we're doing this is because God blesses unity 
And the more that we have pray, the greater the voice, the greater the sound of the chorus, the choir that goes up before the Lord, the sound of praise and worship, the sound of voices growing in unity and in honor before God. So share this. It will bring hope to someone today. His grace is sufficient for you as I close out our Facebook Live.